So upon graduation of college, my bishop, encouraged by the college seminary advisors, they, he asked me to go to Rome. That famous place nestled in the Mediterranean, a cradle of Western civilization, home to the world's oldest Christian nation. There I could further emerge myself into the dreams of childhood. There, for most certain, in the ancient cathedrals and homes of God, I would finally see the dreams of my faith played out in reality. While I loved the dreams in college, I still hoped that somehow, with the right incantation, the right place, the right light perhaps even, I would see the divine. I hoped that the fantasy so well described in the gospel and the faith would become more than dreams and I would experience beyond that hope, reality. I remember so well setting foot upon the crumbling streets of Rome, their cobblestones grabbing at my toes, almost as if to protest my walking there almost personal. There in Rome, thrust from the dreams of a monastery, I entered into a nightmare of fundamentalist society of Roman Catholics. These people pushed me to leave the niceties of those faith dreams behind and to look at the faith dreams of blood and tears. And there standing before the church of Caiaphas, looking at the grandeur of a place that should have sparked a fire, fantastical dreams, thrust upon me the stones cast of a belief system that would ultimately come to hate me. Seminarians clutching at rosaries, papal masses, long black cassocks, religious societies, Jesuits, legionaries of Christ, nuns, friars, and brothers, they all swirled around me, joyful in their fantastical praise of the Christ, his mother, the church's martyrs and saints. I arrived at this ancient city and was immediately aware of how inadequate my doubts in the faith would prepare me to live in a community of believers who had no doubt about their God. I lived with men in seminary who laughed at other faiths. They found flaws in other faith systems and other Christian beliefs and would do everything they could to tear those beliefs apart. And in some way, in their deconstructionism of faith, they believed they were building their own walls of faith stronger, using the cast off sad philosophical debates which they believed they always won. They would rest back and sing praise to Christ for allowing themselves to be so bright, so powerful. And every time they mocked the belief of another faith, I cringed. I cried inside, and I wondered what they would do to me if they knew that when I slipped rosary beads between my fingers, I didn't believe in virgin mothers. That I doubted if the Christ had ever even existed. My faith started to become as real as the magic and the mountain. A dream that, while so nice in theory, never became anything more than a dream, a boyhood fantasy. Yet, like a drug, being offered the chance to become, in persona Christe, to become like the person of God, I still wanted to know that if the spell would hold, and maybe in that moment, when oil is dripped on my forehead, I would become the Christ.